In the last Jenkins pipeline video, we saw how to build our code base, how to test it as well. However, we never saw how to deploy the same artifact into a cloud instance. In this video, we're going to see how to deploy using Jenkins pipeline into Pivotal Cloud Foundry instance. Thank you very much, Rashmi, for providing the Pivotal Cloud Foundry login. I had already mentioned that I had uh, lost my trial version of uh, the login for the Pivotal Cloud Foundry because I had created it long back and it got expired. Uh, I got the new login from Rashmi who had uh, added me as a member. So I, I'm able to access the instance which she has. So I'm sharing that instance with her. Thank you for that Rashmi. So I'll be showing you how you can deploy into this particular Cloud Foundry instance using Jenkins. I'm not going to follow any manual process. Let's use the Jenkins pipeline to build our code base which is hosted in github and then push it to the pivotal cloud foundry instance let's get started press the bell icon on the youtube app and never miss any updates from tech timers so we are going to create the code and host it in github i'm going to use the spring initializer start.spring.io in order to create a spring boot application and then push it into the github repository and the moment you push the code or commit the code we need to push it into the pivotal cloud foundry instance basically the moment you commit code into the github code base or the repository it needs to be pushed into our development environment right that's the ideal case of a continuous integration and continuous deployment pattern we already saw this kind of pattern using AWS code pipeline. In this video, we are going to see using Jenkins pipeline and we are going to push it into the Pivotal Web Services or the Pivotal Cloud Foundry. So in order to do that, we need to check out the code from GitHub and we need to build that particular code. Basically, we need to package the source code into an artifact which can be shipped into the destination machine. So in our case, we are going to use the Spring Boot application. So we need to build the jar out of it. So we can skip the test stage because I'm going to show you how to deploy it. So after the test comes the deploy. So the, this is the ideal case of a Jenkins pipeline. So we check out the code, build the code, usually you run unit test or functional test over that particular code. And then we finally deploy to the dev instance. And from there we can take on and deploy to the other instances, for example, SIT, UAT and production. So let's go to the uh, Spring Initializer and create a Spring Boot application. So I'm going to name this as comtechprimer slash Jenkins. I'm going to call this particular artifact as uh, CICD Jenkins example. So this is going to be a continuous integration and continuous deployment example. So what endpoints do we need? We are going to use the Spring uh, MVC. So let's add Spring MVC. I'm not going to add anything else. I'm just going to add the Spring MVC dependency to it. I'll open this project in IntelliJ. The project is now open in IntelliJ and I can see only the main class, which is uh, the CICD example pipeline example application, right? So let's add one uh, rest endpoint just for the sake of testing it. So I'm going to call it as hello controller. And this is the rest controller. So I'm just going to annotate it with rest controller. And let's add a get mapping, which is going to return us hello YouTube. That's it. I don't have anything else in this particular project. Now we need to add the Jenkins file to this particular project. So I've added the Jenkins file into the root directory because that is the Jenkins file, which is used by the Jenkins pipeline in order to build its pipeline. We need to have the DSLs in place. So the pipeline is the first DSL. Um, in Since this uh, Jenkins instance is going to be running in my machine, I don't have any specific agent. So I'm going to say run and use any agent and we are going to define different stages in it. So there are different stages. The first stage is the build stage because as a part of the pipeline, I'm going to build and then deploy it. I'm not going to test it because I don't have any test case in this particular code base, but I'm just going to deploy the application after building it. So I have only two stages, the 
build stage and the deploy stage and as a part of the build stage we are going to compile the code base and we are going to create a package out of it so there are different steps we need to run right so the maven clean package is one of them so let's create some steps so steps is another dsl in order to create a pipeline stage i'm going to use the maven um, option so using maven 3.5.0 which is configured in my uh, system i'm going to run the maven clean package so in order to package this artifact i'm going to run this particular code base with maven clean package and the next stage will be the deployment stage as a part of the deployment stage i need to run again some set of commands right so these are the commands which are used to deploy into my pcf instance if you see here this deploy stage is the final stage right so i need to deploy my artifacts into pcf in order to do that i'm going to use the with credentials plugin and retrieve the username and password from my jenkins instance so i i'm going to configure my username and password in jenkins so if you see here this with credentials is a dsl which is going to retrieve my username and password for the pcf login so this is this is the credential id which i have created pcf login is a credential id i'll just show you by logging into the um, jenkins instance So in the Jenkins instance, there is something called credentials. If you have known, this is the credential store and I have added my PCF username and password here. See that this is my PCF username and password where I have given my ID name as PCF underscore login and I have given my username and password here. This is nothing but the description. So this is what I have given here. I'm going to use this username and password at the runtime here. So what Jenkins will do is using the with credentials, it will go and retrieve the username and password and store it in the variable called username and password. And we can use that username and password here. See that this is the CF uh, CLI command. If you are using Cloud Foundry, you know that this is how you log into the Cloud Foundry instance. And that's what I have done here. And next I'm going to run the CF push. So if you have the CLI installed directly on your Jenkins machine, you can use the CF directly, but I have it installed in the shared location in my local. So that is why I had to use this inside the Jenkins machine. So I'm just doing a CF login. This CF login will log into the API. The command line interface will log into the API of my Pivotal Cloud Foundry instance. And I'm going to use the CF push command in order to push the application. Uh, in order to push the application, we need the manifest file. The CFCLI requires the manifest file. So I'm going to create the manifest YAML. This manifest YAML will have the details of the application configuration for my application. So I'm going to have um, applications. And the name of the application can be CICD example. CICD Jenkins example. Let's call it that way, right? And the number of instances I want is one. The memory which we require uh, is like, let's give 800 MB. The path of my artifact is what I need to give here. So the artifact path would be something like this, right? And I need to give the name of the jar here. So what will be the name of the jar? It will be 0 0.0.1 with this particular jar example. So let's give the artifact 0.0.1 hyphen snapshot dot jar so this will be the artifact name so I'm, I'm giving the path of my artifact as well as a part of the manifest file so when we run the cf push here as a part of the jenkins pipeline here the manifest file will be leveraged to push the application onto cloud foundry instance so that's what we are doing here so now we need to push this into github so in order to do that I'm going to log into my GitHub instance and create a new repository and I'm going to push this particular change into that new repository. So I'm going to call it the same Jenkins example, CSCD Jenkins example. So I'll copy the remote command and I'm going to initiate a git for this particular project. So let's do git let's do git in it this will initiate git in this particular project and i'm going to link the remote repository into this particular project again 
now we can add the files and we can commit them that's it so we are done now we are going to push this into the master so the moment we push this should be in github yep the code is all pushed into github there is no readme right now i'll add the readme after the recording is completed and you can take a look at the readme to understand what are the steps which we have performed see that we have the jenkins file and everything is sorted however we did not configure the github project in our jenkins instance so the build won't trigger until we configure it right so i'm going to create a new project and i'm going to create a multi branch pipeline so let's call this a ci cd jenkins example and let's create a multi branch pipeline so there is an add sources option here i have a option to select github and i can select the credential so i already have the github credentials uploaded here which is tech timers and slash whatever and so the repository which i'm going to use is the ci cd jenkins example yeah this is the repository which we want to link so using the tech primers login we retrieved all the repositories and i'm going to link the ci cd jenkins example and the build configuration says by jenkins file yes we want the jenkins file if let's say you don't have the jenkins file you want to have the configuration inside the jenkins instance then you can paste it here so there will be a space here if i don't have the jenkins file you can paste the script here right that's it i don't have to set anything else so let me save this configuration the moment i say save this configuration the build will be triggered because the scans are going to be triggered and it is going to look into the jenkins file if it is having a jenkins file immediately a build will be triggered on each of the branches which has the jenkins file so we have only the master branch so we can see the master branch getting built notice that already the build stage has got triggered if i compare the um, jenkins file i have here so we have two stages build and then deploy directly that's it we are not doing doing anything else so let's look at the logs what's happening as a part of the build so as a part of the build the maven 3.5.0 version got picked which is what we had configured it has picked that particular version and then the maven package has got triggered and it is getting run see that the maven clean package whatever command we had mentioned here it is run and the build is proceeding so let's wait for the build to succeed and let's proceed to the deploy stage so finally the build stage got completed and the deploy stage got kicked in as a part of the deploy stage the cf login is will be triggered and the cf push is going to happen let's look at the log now because this is the final stage let's go to the end yep the cf push is happening if you notice here the cf login command got triggered see this is what we had given right the username and password if you see has been masked because jenkins masks this because we retrieve the username and password as a part of the with credentials plugin so we have successfully logged into the api and finally the cf push command got triggered so when the cf push command got triggered the manifest file was leveraged and the artifacts are getting uploaded and in fact we should be able to see the name of the application here yep see that uh, the last push was few seconds ago this is the application which we deployed ci cd jenkins example uh, see that this is what is getting pushed right now let's look at the logs inside the jenkins file to see if it is all good yep the build is successful i guess yep the build is successful i can see the blue option here so the build and deploy got successful and let's hit the endpoint and see if the application is up yeah the spring boot application is up we had added a endpoint called hello and that also says hello youtube so this is how you can use jenkins pipeline to trigger the build just to check again the configuration what we can do is we can update the hello controller to hello tech primers and let's try pushing this change again and meanwhile i will summarize what did we do as a part of this particular video so what i will do is i'll just push the change to the remote repository since i don't have the hook set up 
right now i think there won't be automatic trigger so i'm going to do the build now option so i'll just summarize what did we do as a part of this particular video so we created a spring boot application using start.spring.io the spring initializer we added a hello controller a dummy controller just to check our feature in this particular application we created a jenkins file with two different stages the build stage and the deploy stage in the deploy stage we added the with credentials dsl this is basically a plugin called with credentials which you need to install in jenkins and after the installation of that you should be able to use this particular dsl so this is to retrieve the password and the username at runtime because we don't want to hard code the username and password in this particular jenkins file in order to do that jenkins provides this credential store where you go to the jenkins instance add the credentials in the jenkins instance and from the jenkins instance you can retrieve it using the credential id which you have given so i have given the credential id as pcf underscore login the username and password is retrieved from there and using the cf cli the cloud foundry cli we are logging into the api url using the username and password and we are doing a cf push because by default i have the manifest.yaml in this particular root directory so if you have the manifest yaml in a different path you can mention cf push hyphen f and then the path of that particular yaml file also we came to jenkins and we created a multi-branch pipeline project this is because if you want to have builds per branch you can do that for example if let's say i am going to create a new branch let's try doing it i'm going to create a new branch called um, feature test and i'm going to push this particular feature branch so if i push this particular feature branch to my remote branch to my remote repository there will be a new branch which will be created and the build should be automatically triggered since i don't have the uh, hook enabled it won't be automatic but when I trigger the scan repository now, it's going to scan my repository and automatically create new pipelines based on all my branches. So here, right now, only the master branch is there. See that the feature branch also got kicked in because we had pushed a new feature called feature hyphen test and that also got kicked in and it, it also is trying to deploy. Right. So I'm going to stop this feature branch. I don't want to mess up with my laptop. <laughs> I already have less memory in it, so I don't want to mess it up. So I killed the feature branch. Let's go to the master and see if the build is successful. No, the build is going to take another. Um, oh, it's already deployed, right? Yeah, I think the hook got the scan now option triggered the build again, but the deploy got succeeded. Let's go to the URL and hit. It should say hello tech primers. Yeah, we got the hello tech primers. So this is how you can enable the continuous integration and the continuous delivery as a part of Jenkins pipeline. And you can be crazy with the Jenkins pipeline. You can add multiple stages. You can have uh, stages for um, uh, scanning. You can have stages for sonar build. You can have stages for running your test suit. You can have even a stage for validating after it is deployed. So you can have multiple stages in your pipeline and have it integrated into your Jenkins pipeline. Since the Jenkins file resides in your repository, it acts as a version control as well. So you can control the whole deployment process from your code base itself as a part of your source code i hope you were able to understand how to configure a jenkins pipeline and how you can leverage continuous integration and continuous delivery to push our artifact from github into pivotal cloud foundry instance as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much